Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm my co-host, Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you uh, introduce today's guest and uh, what we're going to be talking about today? This one's going to be good. He's got two names, and I'm not sure which one we're going to go with. So I'm going to say the phone jacker. I'm sure he can introduce himself in a second, <laughs> but this is sales trainer. This is cold caller. This is YouTube extraordinaire, course creator, content creator, sales persona. <laughs> I could go on. Um, Calum, how you doing, mate? Welcome to the show. I'm good, thanks. Yeah, thank you for having me. You know, it's funny, you mentioned the phone jacker. I saw the original phone jacker today, K-Van. He was in my office, but I didn't get a chance to say anything because he was in a meeting room. So, but yeah, I met the original. The real today. guy. The real, the real guy, K-Van. Um, yeah. You're the only, I, I saw you like two years ago on LinkedIn and your name obviously being what it is. I was like, where have I heard that before? And then I remember, oh my God, yeah, it's from like one of those late night prank shows. And yeah, that, that's what made you was, click at look at who you are. Yeah, I basically stole when I set up the business, his trademark for Phone Jacker, his TV series was called Phone Jacker, had just ended. So I just stole it from him <laughs> literally when I started. <laughs> wow. So uh so Sean, you don't know anything about Callum. Um, where do you want to start? I listed a lot of things there. Well, I'd like to, you know, tell me maybe get from Callum's own own words, kind of what you do, what your business does, and we'll go from there. Yeah. Well, why don't I start from where it all started with the phone jacker? So I think it's coming up to two years now. Initially, I started out um, self-employed offering prospecting as a service, um, primarily yeah. cold calling, right? Which is where the I stole the name, the phone jacker. And yeah, I did that for best part of 18 months. And then I thought I'd had enough of this. It's intense sitting on the phone all day, trying to schedule meetings and the rest of it. And then I thought, right, I'm ready to go and teach other people how to do it. And so I thought, right, I'm going to do that. And yeah, I've been, I don't even know how long it's been, not that long, a few months since I've kind of transitioned over from doing prospecting as a service to sales training. Uh, and as, as Ollie alluded to in that time of, um, launched an online crash course, um, helping people telephone prospect, uh, one-to-one training, uh, in-house training for corporate companies. And then, yeah, just trying to grow that with marketing across YouTube and primarily LinkedIn. That's where I started. Um, so yeah, that's a whistle stop tour of where I've been and what I do now. So, so, you know, right off the bat, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, what are one to two things that you feel people that do cold calling do either wrong or can improve? Like what are the two biggest mistakes cold callers make? Two biggest mistakes. Um, I think the biggest mistake or the biggest issue with cold calling telephone prospecting is that it gets a bad reputation. So it's hard. A lot of people get hung up on, right? Because yeah. notoriously you call someone up, they think, oh, it's a sales call. I don't want to have this conversation. And so people get hung up on, or they just make up an excuse. I'm, in, I'm on a call, I'm in a meeting and yeah, they don't, they don't want to do it, right? They don't want to have that conversation. And the reason that comes about is because most salespeople talk about themselves when they're cold calling and often more often than not, they're talking about their business features, advantages and benefits, who they've worked for, uh, clients, customers, and all the rest of it. And they hear prospects hear this all the time and it's boring, right? That's the first thing. And the second thing as well is the, in most cases, most businesses, they're nothing new or special or different, right? There's loads of competitors out there doing the same thing. And so they sound exactly like everyone else. And there's no point of differentiation or anything where the prospect might think, you know what, this is actually worth a conversation. And yeah, they switch off. So I think that's probably, yeah, the two two areas. But I think the biggest problem is salespeople talk about themselves way too much and it puts prospects off. By themselves too much. Uh, like I, I had like four this morning. Um, they were they were more like the second part of what you described. They were kind of didn't really say too much, too interesting, pretty canned, cliche stuff. They could have said it to anyone. I don't expect like super A one personalization. I'm probably not the top of their list of buyers, but mm -hmm. I don't think they spoke about themselves. By that, do you just mean like them and their company and what it does, and and yeah. I'm like another person on the list, or like when they get on the phone, it's like I would like to do that. I am busy on this day. Can we talk that day and that type of thing? Yeah, no, it's a really good question. I think the the crux of the answer to that is that 
what motivates people to buy, right, is emotion first, and then they justify it with some form of logic or intellect. And so the emotion part, people are motivated to move away from pain far greater than they are to move towards pleasure, right? Um, what I was taught is you'll move your hand away from a hot stove quicker than you will towards an ice cream, which I thought was a good analogy. And so knowing that and knowing that people are going to be motivated to buy if they're trying to move away from some painful or problems in their world, then that's what salespeople need to talk about when they're prospecting. And so back to your question, Ollie, and the point that you made is that uh, a lot of salespeople talk about themselves, i.e. features, advantages, and benefits of their products. And also they try and impress prospects by telling them how great they are and all these clients that they've worked with and all the rest of it. But unless the prospect is experiencing some sort of problem or symptoms of problem that your product or service can fix, they're never going to be motivated to buy. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm alluding to. And I guess what most salespeople don't probably appreciate or understand. And by not doing it, they struggle with prospecting and cold calling. And that's why it's so much harder than it needs to be. So I have a, a, you know, another good question. I like, I like talking to people that have been there because I, I was never, you know, I never did much cold calling in my day. Um, mm. Just never enjoyed it. But I, you know, I feel like I can, I've, when I have done, I've been successful because I use, you know, personality winners, but I want to see what you think about this. I actually get a lot of cold calls. I got one yesterday when I was actually heading to the dentist. And that one I do like when people intro that cold call is when they tell me right away, it's a cold call. Yeah. So meaning right off the bat, they go, Hey, Ollie, you know, this is a cold call, but I just want 30 seconds of your time. I'm not going to beat around the bush. Instead of somebody saying, hi, is this Sean? Oh, are you the GM at auto close and et cetera? I already know right away. So if you just tell me being honest with me and say, listen, this is a cold call. It's part of my job. I just want to give you, can I have 30 seconds of your time? You're not going to find people say, no, I'm not giving you 30 seconds. They'll be like, okay. Like I, I would say, okay, shoot, like go. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, it's pretty much exactly the sort of opener that I would use. And you, I guess you've got to understand, I guess it's probably the same in the US, but definitely in the UK, that when we think about prospecting in the B2B space and uh, like generic sales that we often see on LinkedIn and YouTube and all the rest of it, most people aren't uh, cold calling. But outside of that, you've got B2C companies, right, which probably are the, the majority of cold calls and prospecting calls that people get. And they often start with an opener of just, hi, hi, Sean, how are you today, right? And first and foremost, you know it's a sales call, but you also know that it's this disingenuous question because they don't really care about the answer. And so to your point about just being um, upfront and honest and candid about what the call's about, you're going to get a lot more success because they know exactly what to expect right and when you're one of a hundred calls where everyone else is saying hi how are you you stand out like a sore thumb right and so for that reason alone it has more success than um, all the other openers that are out there so yeah i use like i said something very similar to what you've um just went through there and people still hang up that's fine but 90 percent of people will give you 30 seconds and for me that's good enough so i'll keep doing it Candid is the word, though, for that. Um, I feel like it's just putting down the barriers. You're just saying, look, it is what it is. You, you don't have to carry on. But at least it's not like this cringy yes funnel. Because back in the day, I don't, I don't know whether this was like officially taught, but you used to have to try and get as many yeses in a row. And that's sort of synonymized with buying behaviors. And it's like BS. People know that they're being asked questions that answer yes, 50 in a row. But, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to a new meta tactic because because that's like people like you people like us when we're asked what's a good cold calling tactic that's the one at the moment and it has been mm -hmm. for a little while i'm kind of looking forward for there to be a new one in a while not that there's anything wrong with that one because like you say not everyone's getting 100 cold calls and when they are they're not that good so that one looks really yeah. good but i'm looking forward to like a new alternative thing at some point just just me my two cents <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I get bored of saying it because I say it every single day, right? Um, but I'll keep using it until it doesn't work. And then when it doesn't work, I'll come up with something else or think about something else. Um, yeah, and try and figure out another solution. But I think you're right because we live in our own little echo chamber of B2B sales on social media. Like You hear the same pattern interrupts and openers all the time, but that little echo chamber probably accounts for less than 5% of the sales world, right? So 
yeah, something to to kind of bear in mind. Speaking of so the echo I, chamber, I have to ask you. Sorry, Sean. Um, I, I will, yeah. there's a few things about like Callum's persona. I, have, I guess is the right word. Like it's really worth digging into. Um, particularly your LinkedIn feed. I'm going to swear a little bit here. No fucks given. You, you just do whatever happens. Like there's pictures of you wearing wigs. It's like your <laughs> own inner monologue of you know what this will be weird and I'll just do it. Is he wearing a wig right now? Or is that just no, here? This, this is. I'm real. not going to expose him. <laughs> you could be sure now. You're looking a little bit long at the back there, but for that's the topic for another day. But you you seem to just do whatever, and I find like I know you do a lot of different channels. You do YouTube and other things too, but particularly your LinkedIn, it's like anti corporate. Here's me doing a selfie with a laptop. Like, oh god, really? It's so cringy and boring. But yours is like funny very raw and authentic like is is this like your because i couldn't do anything more polished than that is this your skill level is this on purpose how did you how do you think of what these things you're going to post are going to be you know it's a really good really good point and set of questions because i don't really think about it too much um a lot of a lot of the kind of persona that i put out there on linkedin is actually me and a lot of my friends would say yeah i can I can sense, I can get your personality through it. So that, that makes it easier because I don't have to force it. Right. And the other thing is when I picked the name, the phone jacker, that was just for marketing. And I just thought, I just need to stand out. And like you said, if you go down the corporate route and a lot of these kind of lead generations and sales agencies, a lot of them have got boring names. And so I just wanted something that was different. And like we discussed earlier, um, the phone jacker was a comedy series where he made prank cold calls basically. And I loved it. And I was like, I'm just going to steal that. And by doing that, it kind of gave me a license to, because it's quite a fun name and like you said, not very corporate, gives me license to play around with it, right? And have a bit of fun. And yeah, I just did that. And the other thing as well is I'm self-employed, so I can get away with anything, right? I haven't got a CEO or a director breathing down my neck trying to kind of... um, like have some control over i can literally do what i want and so often i do and yeah the stuff that works just hangs around and whatever doesn't yeah you never hear from it again so yeah i that's basically it i guess the answer so i just wanted to, to get into some numbers i'm sure the audience listening would love to know you know what you know as you coach these um i guess students or at sales people on cold calling what do you think the typical number of cold calls a rep should be making in a day? And what do you think the conversion of those, how many conversations out of that? Like, should a rep be making 60 calls a day and, and having five conversations? Or what do those numbers look like to you? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it depends. I think at one point the kind of highlights what you were talking about, I think is really important is salespeople need to understand or have an idea of their math of sales or math of prospecting. And that, what I mean by that is if they've got a set, if they've got a revenue target, they should know what their average order value is and how many people they need to sell to, to meet their sales target or exceed it. And yep. so if you could back into those numbers, you can figure out, well, how many conversations do I need to have to book a meeting? How many meetings do I need to have to hit my target? Um, and then you can back into that. And so the best advice I would give is once you figure out how many conversations you need to have to book a meeting on average, then you just need to divide that up by how many days, weeks, months there are in yep. a year, and then just focus on hitting those um, targets. And then obviously you could put a buffer in there. That's what I would always do because life gets in the way, right? And you get sick or you go on holiday and all the rest of it. And so, yeah, by having a buffer and you just do more than you need to, then you don't really have to worry. You just have to focus on turning up every day and hitting your target. So that would be the first point. What that looks like, uh, I guess a good number is probably somewhere between five and 10 a day for, for me anyway. Um, But another question I got asked a while ago was, uh, to your point as well, conversa- uh, conversion from conversation to meeting. And yeah. I think I've, I had seven clients that I worked with when I was prospecting all in different industries and I couldn't find any consistency in terms of a uh, number of conversations yeah. to meet him. Right. Uh, all depends on the nature of the business, nature of the industry. Um, and 
yeah, it's just different. I, I couldn't say there's anything that kind of makes sense. And also quality of the list, right? If you're speaking to the wrong people, it's going to make your job a lot harder. Um, your numbers will be a lot worse if you don't know those right phone numbers. Yeah, exactly that. Um, so yeah, I guess that that would be my answer. But also it's just something that you've always got to be working on, right? Because if you're a sales rep and I don't know, maybe you're getting a meeting one in 20, realistically, you should be able to get that down. So you just got to work on getting better at cold calling, uh, perhaps improve your list and make sure you're speaking to the right people and continuously learn and yeah, take those learnings forward. And then it just gets easier after a while, right? Yep. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's it's one of those where um, if you get like a not right now, but calling those people back up as well, that's not really factored back into your like close ratio, as it were, not really close ratio, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, one last thing okay. for me, I want to ask you, right at the start, you said prospecting is a service. Why yeah. that? Why that when you go self-employed of all the things that you can choose? I'm assuming it comes out of your trade and your skill set, but there's a lot of different angles you can go from being a, a salesperson of any level. Why that? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, the story behind that is when I basically worked with a guy called Benjamin Dennehy. I think you know him, right, Ollie? Yeah, uh, we know. Yeah. You guys know yeah. him, yeah? So I worked with him ages ago, three, four years ago now. And uh, I'd worked with him for maybe 10 months, coming up to a year or something along those lines. And it got to the point where... I was struggling to put everything into practice in uh, my existing job. And there were loads of reasons around that, which I won't go into too much detail, but there were loads of reasons. And I was like, well, my primary focus here is to get good at all the stuff that I've been learning. And so if I can't do it at this company, then I need to do something different, right? Because that's, that's what I'm aiming to do. That's the goal. Uh, and then stupidly, I don't even know why I did it. I just quit my job. And I had nothing lined up, but I had a three month um, notice period. So I had three months to figure this out. And I thought, that's enough time to figure it out. I don't know what I'm going to do. And then um, I had a couple of options, get another job or go self-employed. But I didn't know what that second part looked like. So I had a conversation with Benjamin, told him, I, I'll quit my job. I don't know what I'm going to do. And he just laughed first and foremost. It was some of the best news I've heard a week, but I didn't really understand why. And then uh, we had a conversation. He said, look, if your focus is to get really good at this and put everything into practice, then you're probably going to struggle to find another company that's going to allow to allow you to do it. And all the problems that you had prior in, in your existing company, a lot of them are going to exist, maybe more. Yeah. And so you've only got one option is to go out and do this on your own. And so that decision was made. And then, yeah, he just said, look, why don't you just do what I did, set up a prospecting business. It's not that much competition out there. Um, you've already been doing it. And yeah, just go and do that. And obviously with that, I could obviously have to sell and find clients and all the rest of it. Um, and then, yeah, that, that, was, that was basically it. And from that moment, I was like, right, I'm going to do this. Uh, and yeah, just go away and develop and try and master it. That was the plan. Anything else, Ollie? No, all good from my end, man. Good stuff. Sounds good. Well, before we uh, finish the uh, the episode off, maybe just um, let me know. Uh, you know, how can people a find you and b how do you self educate yourself? Yeah. So, how do I self educate? How do I answer that? Um, well, I guess like I said, because I learned from Benjamin, Yeah, he basically gave me kind of the framework and uh, everything to do on my calls and in my sales meetings. So I already had that, like the boundary set kind of thing. I just needed to get the reps in and just get good at it. Um, so the only way that I self-educate now is listening back to my calls. That's the, the nice. most thing, right? Uh, and I would always, what I'd say, document my process. So... I'm literally prepared for every possible outcome that could come up on a cold call or in a sales meeting. And it's written down on some bit of paper and the moment it isn't, and I mess up and I don't know how to respond to a question or an objection, then I'll go away and I'll try and figure out, well, what's the response? How should I handle this? Or what could I have done better? And yeah, it's just continuous improvement after that, right? You just keep doing it. And yeah, every client, every industry, there was always a nuance or something new that came up that I had to figure out or a problem to solve. And so, yeah, in terms of my own development, that was really interesting and really good because kind of helped me sharpen my tools in loads of different industries, right? It made me more well-rounded when coming to prospecting. Um, so, yeah, that's how I self-educate myself now. 
but yeah, I have a process and a framework that I operate in, which doesn't really change. Um, and yeah, so where can people find me? LinkedIn, uh, the phone jacker, Callum Beecroft. You can find me there. Uh, yeah, I've got a YouTube channel. Also, I think my handle's the phone jacker. Um, so yeah, I post loads of videos and stuff there. Um, and for any salespeople listening, that prospect or cold call, I've got a free course that's a four-part video series, I think, which explains why most salespeople find prospecting on the phone so hard. And there's a free framework in there, the framework that I use on my cold calls. And yeah, if you go to my website, it's all on there, basically. Perfect. Well, thank you uh, for joining us today. Um, this has been well, a great episode me. on cold calling. And thank you also to everybody listening. Uh, if you enjoyed the show today, don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you're listening from and subscribe so you don't miss the next show. Callum, thank you so much. And everybody else, see you soon. Uh, pleasure. Thank you.